here are a few things to remember as you attend our worship service. Please note the emergency exits near you. Always keep an eye on your valuables, especially if you are seated at the aisles or at the last row of your section. Kindly silence your mobile phones during the service. If you have children with you, we encourage you to bring them to Kids Church, where they can listen to God's Word at a level more appropriate for their age. For the elderly, pregnant, parents with toddlers, and people with disabilities, we have reserved seats for you at the back of our worship hall. Parents with toddlers may also use our toddler's room at the back. Again, welcome to Victory, where we exist to honor God and make disciples. The worship service will start in a few minutes. broken with blinded eyes i was caught up in the chains of darkness fragile heart meant to die till love found me and saved my life never lost cause i knew i'd take refuge where
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our 1 p.m. worship service. So as we ready our hearts na mag-worship po sa ating Panginoon, ginagawa po natin ito eh. Ginagawa po natin ito to ready our hearts na magkaroon po muna tayo ng, ano, ng brief time to close our eyes. Tapos, kausapin lang po natin si God. Leave our concerns behind. Tapos, mag-focus lang po tayo sa Kanya. Why don't we do that at this time? All right. Can I invite everyone to please stand? As we worship the Lord this afternoon, I'm just reminded and comforted dun po sa idea na ano, ang Panginoon po natin ay lagi po natin kasama. He is with us. Our God is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Napaka-encouraging po nun, given na sa buhay po natin, iba't iba ang ating mga situations na na-encounter. Hindi ko po alam sa inyo kung ano po yung mga ups and downs ninyo this week. Marami po tayo mga pagkakataon na, ano, na sa buhay natin, before we come to worship, meron tayong mga times that we feel confident, we feel in control, we feel at peace. Pero meron po mga pagkakataon din na nasa-shake yon na meron po tayong mga doubts dun sa uncertainties, hindi po natin alam kung ano yung mga susunod na mangyayari, we lose confidence. But it is good to remember that the Lord is with us because the one who is with us will never ever let us be on, on our own. Kung ano man po yung mga haharapin natin o dinadaanan natin, alam nyo lang po, Alam niyo lang po na hindi niyo dadaanan yung mag-isa. And the one who is with us is our all-powerful God. So kung ano man po ang mga situations natin, whether yan ay sa family, sa workplace, sa school, kung ano man po yun, know that the one who is with you will be your strength, your security, your peace the one who is with you. So as we worship this afternoon, yung po yung tandaan natin, we have our God who loves us so much, who has given us everything. So we can face life, we can, we can face life worshiping God. We can face our days with a sense of security. The Lord is with us. Lord, we are so thankful that you are the one who brings us peace. You bring us security, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that we get to worship you together as a church. Just thanking and celebrating your goodness upon our lives. And that just that, that, that's, that, that assurance, Lord God, that we will never be alone, rejected, abandoned, because you are the God will never forsake us. Thank you, Lord, so much. We honor you and we worship you at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us worship our God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church. Let's give back the offering that he deserves. Your love I hear resounding This freedom I shall see Sing no trouble 
No trouble can destroy my hope For you're as God's made me whole Turning down all the voices of despair On your promises I stand I will not fear when the waters rise Declare your church I will not fear though I walk through fire For you are with me You are with me You have redeemed my life Yes, Lord No trouble can destroy my hope your scars have made me whole Turning down all the voices of despair On your promises I stand One more time declare it On your promises I stand I will not fear when the waters rise Yes, Lord I will not fear though I walk through fire For you are with me You are with me You have redeemed my life I will not fear When the waters rise I will not fear though I walk through fire For you are with me are with me, you have redeemed my life. Oh, oh, your grace sustains me, your love, my victory. I walk the valley, trust in you, your grace unfailing, your love, my victory. I walk. The valley trusting you one more time your grace sustains me your love my victory I want the valley trusting you your grace unfailing your love my victory I want the valley trusting you I'll trust in you I'll trust church I will not fear though I walk through fire you are with me you are with me you have redeemed my life I will not fear when waters rise I will not fear
it but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood Thank you, Lord, for the victory. Indeed, you are great, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Help us, Lord, to remove everything that would hinder us, Lord, from worshiping you with what you deserve, God. You are a great God, Lord. You cannot be limited, Lord. You can never be boxed. God, we worship you. Accept our offering, Lord. And you'll be praised, and you'll be glorified, God. Oh. Overcomes 
our enemies and turns our darkness into light. Let's lift up our hands. We will lift up our hands. We will rise and take a stand. Cause he is the great God. He is an awesome, wonderful God. Mighty and power, author of wisdom, better than life. And Lord, our God who sits on Worship the Lord. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Every tribe confess he is king. Every tribe confessing his king. As we worship the name of Jesus.
God on your behalf. Sabi po sa Romans 8 verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? God is for you. Kung ano man po yung mga situations na meron sa buhay natin, whether they are happy situations or challenging situations, the Lord is for you. I just feel like He wants you to find comfort and confidence in that. Marami po mga times na shake tayo ng mga situations, but the Lord is for you. Yun na po yung kailangan natin sa buhay natin. The Lord is for you. Siya po yung tutulong sa atin pag tayo ay nawawala ng hope. Siya po yung mag encourage sa atin. He has given us His Holy Spirit so that we will be able to overcome whatever situations we may be facing. Kung ano man po yung mga nararamdaman natin, know that the Lord hears that. And He sees. He sees you. I want to encourage you Anchor your confidence on God. Kung meron po kayong kinakailangan na pagsandalan, ang Panginoon po natin yon. He is strong. Kung meron po kayong mga times na nang, nangihina po kayo, okay lang po yun. Because the, long is strong, the Lord is strong on your behalf. He is for you. Who can be against us, church, knowing that meron pong tulong ang Panginoon para sa bawat isa, he understands. Kahit po hindi nyo nga sabihin eh, na, narinig na po niya. Kahit po ang kaya niya na lang sabihin ay, ah, alam po niya, narinig po niya. May you find confidence and comfort knowing that that's how close God is to you. That's how mindful He is of you. He loves you so much. Kaya niyo po ang harapin ng mga susunod na araw because the Lord is with you. Amen. Lord, we are so thankful. We are so thankful, Lord God, that we are worshiping a God who is not just strong and mighty, but a God who loves us so much. And you have displayed that love when you have sent your Son, Jesus, to die for us. Para po ma-reconcile kami sa iyo, Lord God, so that we, we just know that we are already part of your family and di kami maalis doon, Lord God. Hindi kami ever separate sa pagmamahal mo sa relationship namin sa iyo, Lord God. Maraming maraming salamat po and we offer you the rest of the afternoon, Lord God, to just magnify you and we want to hear from you, Lord God, and to honor you and to worship you. Thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. We may sit down for a while as we continue to worship God in the area of our finances. Ayan, so, batiin po muna natin yung ating mga katabi. Ayan, hello po. Para may mga nagpupunas-punas po yata ng mata. Hindi ko po alam kung dahil sa madilim kanina at lumiwanag na or dahil uh, na may ministeran ni Lord. Yeah, and so thank you for joining us this afternoon. We are going to worship God in the area of our finances. We are going to continue our uh, giving series. Now, can we show yung ating ano, um, giving verse for today? 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8. 
The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things, at all times you may abound in every good work. Yan. So for this Sunday, ang hasagutin naman po nating tanong ay, what is God's standard in giving? God's standard in giving is generosity. Yan. Tinan mo nga po yung inyong katabi. Mukha bang generous ang iyong katabi? Sabi mo sa kanya, Sampulan mo nga after ng service. Ayan. So, pag sinabi po natin generous, naisip po natin yung uh, person, a generous person is someone who gives concrete blessings or gives benefits to others. Generosity is ultimately a heart matter as it starts with a heart that wants or desires to give and bless others. Uh, a generous person po, ang heart po niyan is to want to give and bless others. Kaya po natin sinabing generosity is a matter of the heart because the person wants, thinks, considers the person he is giving to or yung situation kung saan siya magbibigay. Kaya he, he or she wants to give more. If you remember po yung mga pagkakataon, I, I think meron naman po tayong at one point in our lives, naka-experience tayo nung ano, nung napipilitan tayo magbigay as compared sa willing na willing kang magbigay. Tama po, no? may pinagkaiba dun sa papano tayo nagbigay. Yan. So, um, generosity is a matter of the heart. And God's standard in giving is generosity. Dahil po, yun din po yung dinisplay niya on the cross when He thought of us, of how to save us. That's why He gave He willingly gave His Son as a sacrifice for us. So tayo rin po, um, may our hearts reflect the heart of our Father who is generous. So in our giving as well, um, let us trust the Lord. Continue to trust the Lord that he, we will never be able to outgive Him. That's why we can give freely, we can give generously because our God takes care of takes care of us. He is our provider. Amen? Yeah, so let's pray po muna bago tayo uh, magready ng ating giving. Lord, we are thankful for this teaching about generosity, how you have first displayed generosity by thinking of us, what will help us, what will save us. And you have given us your son, Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that we will grow in our uh, with a heart that is generous like yours. At may express po namin yon in our trust in the area of finances as we give to you and as we are generous with others. Lord, whatever we are able to give, multiply it to, for, to advance your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yan. So, meron pala tayong application. Nakakalimutan ko parati itong part ng application. Yan. So, Uh, application is acknowledge that we are blessed today because of God's amazing generosity which should transform our hearts toward generosity. Pag-iisipin po natin kung gaano, kung gaano ang display ng generosity at pagmamahal ni God. Ay talaga naman po mamumove din tayo na ano, na tama nga po na pagkatiwala natin ng Panginoon and we are able to give to others. Also, we can Uh, seriously consider the benefit of others when giving. Ask God that God would increase your capacity to give and bless others. Ayan. So, pag po may mga pagkakataon na feeling natin, napipilitan tayo magbigay, why not take the time to pray first? And ano, ask natin si Lord, Lord, ganito po yung nadaramdaman ko, but your word teaches me to give generously. So, help me to consider this person and re to remember that you're the one providing for my needs so I can give. And give generously as you have decided in your heart. Yan. Faith action naman po yan. So as we prepare our giving, ito po yung ways that we can give. We can give online. Ito po yung mga um, yan, like every Sunday naman po pina-flash natin yan. You can take a picture or you can use our offering envelope which is on your 
seats. Yeah. So, uh, we have been doing this. Naglalagay po tayo ng five-minute break para po magkaroon kayo ng time to prepare your giving, to pray personally before you do that. Para alam nyo lang po na worship ko to kay, kay God. Yun. And you can also use the time to meet the person kat nakatabi po ninyo, makipagkilala lang po kayo because magkasama naman po tayo dito sa service. Yan. So let's have our five-minute break and um, let's start it now. Yan. And also may coffee pa po tayong ni-ready para po tatayo tayo sa chairs natin, magko-coffee tayo at magmimingle din tayo sa ating mga kasama dito sa service. I'm losing my gravity All the way that holds me down It's your love that lifts me out You cross my security This world has no more control I'm bringing you to my restore I got no reservations as you take me higher My life is elevated Cause you make me move And I'm rising up with you Rising up with you Rising up with you, rising up with you.
Okay, ayan. So, I hope you enjoyed our break. Kung kukuha pa po kayo, okay lang po yun. Feel, feel comfortable. Ayan, so welcome to our 1pm worship service. My name is Alana, one of the leaders here in our service. And as we, before, before we continue with our series, magbibigay po muna ako ng update. Dahil today po, kanina lang po, ay nagbiyahin na ang ating La Trinidad team. Yon. Kinuha lang po yan, kanin-kanina lang. So, naka, uh, napag-pray sila sa 9am and 11am service. Pero sa 1pm po, kailangan na nilang ano eh, bumiyahe. Kaya picture na lang po yung pray natin sa kanila. Just, an, just to update you, since we mentioned na ta, nung, nung earlier po, they were raising their support and casting the vision to people. Um, just to let you know, The faithful that they have experienced the faithfulness of God. Sa hard, sa hard work po nila, sa, sa faithfulness din po nila of sharing the vision of doing the local mission, they were able to reach more than 100% of the funds that they were raising. Yon, as in lahat po yata ay ano eh, more than more than 100% lahat sila. Yon, so lahat po nung na raise nila na support ay para po sa expenses na kanilang may incur dun sa kanilang trip at pupunta rin po yon sa church. Yon, kaya po ano napakagandang opportunity po nito na makapag-bless po ang Victory Calamba sa kapatid na church natin dun po sa La Trinidad. Yan. So, let's take this time Ipag-pray po natin sila and also I, I will encourage you they will be staying there for two about two weeks. Let's continue to pray for them as they stay, they, they minister there, as they engage, na maraming ma ng gospel, ma-plant sa church natin doon sa La Trinidad. Yan, so, Lord God, we are thankful for your faithfulness, Lord. Tsaka po dito sa opportunity na to na nabuo for us to be able to be a blessing to our church there in La Trinidad. And as the team goes there, we are praying, Lord God, for your protection over them. Protect their health, Lord God, that they will not get sick. And protect as well their families who are here. Lord, may your peace be upon them. Give them wisdom, Lord God, that as they uh, engage the people, yung magiging ano sila, mabilis makakonect, and they will be able to present the gospel, gospel clearly. Also, we pray that you will stretch out your hand, that miracles and signs and wonders will follow as they introduce Jesus to them, Lord God. Thank you po for our church there. In, uh, increase, strengthen them as well, Lord God, as we have this opportunity of working together. May your kingdom be advanced mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Yan, yan. So, Um, now we are going to continue with our series, but I will be introducing our preacher for this afternoon. Yon, so, uh, the Nunags, Pastor CJ and Pastor, may have been here since yesterday. So, nagmi-minister na po sila, pagalating na pagalating pa lang po nila dito, kahapon. They have uh, had mentoring time with our campus ministry, yung mga sudyante po natin, they enjoy their time sa mga sudyante kasi po, campus po at talaga ay nasa puso po nila. And um, uh, Pastor CJ has been ministering in our 4pm service, tapos ka, nung gabi naman po, we spend time with them. Kaya, since yesterday po, uh, we have been enjoying the, ano, the privilege of receiving from, from them. And today po, si Pastor Mai naman po, yung makakasama natin as she preaches the word. So, ito po mga gantong opportunities. I'm really thankful that Pastor Jared is doing this for our church. Kasi po, every time we have visitors, leaders from our movement and leaders from other uh, Victory Church, nagiging malaking blessing po talaga sa atin as we receive impartations, learnings, dun sa kanilang years in the ministry. Na, malaking uh, tulong po ito sa atin as a church, yung pong may mga gantong pagkakataon na nakaka, may nakakasama po tayong mga leaders natin sa movement. And si Pastor Mai po, ay ano, isa po siya sa mga teachers namin sa School of Ministry. Tapos kagabi po, yung po yung opportunity, first opportunity ko po na ano, na makasama ko po siya kasi po nakapag-dinner kami together. And it's really 
encouraging. Sobrang encouraging po. Hindi lang po for me, also for our church sa pagmi-minister po nila, sa pag encourage po nila. Nakaka-strengthen po yung kanilang ano pagpunta po dito. Yon. So, uh, si Pastor CJ at si Pastor Mai po have been married for 19 years. Sama po nila yung kanilang daughter, si L dito. Yung eldest po nila nasa school, nasa Siliman. Kaya hindi po kasama ngayon. Yon. So, nakatanda po ako nung 9 a.m. service. Nag-preach din po si Pastor Mai doon. At saka po yung kay Pastor CJ, napahingan ko rin po. It's really encouraging to to hear the word of God dito po sa ating week 4. So, Victory Church, Kalamba, let's open our hearts and let's be excited to encounter God through the message of Pastor Man. Thank you so much, Alana. Good afternoon, everyone. Batiin mo naman yung katabi mo. Sabihin mo naman, I'm glad that you're here. Okay, first and foremost, first and foremost, from our family to yours, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Kasi September na, mga Pinoy tayo. You know, I'm like this because I don't feel like I'm a guest. I'm actually a part of the family. Um, our victory as a movement is celebrating its 40th anniversary and we're all a part of that. Grabe no, the church that has been birthed and started in the campuses, in the universities, God is using now to actually reach out the different parts of our nation. And you're a part of that. I just got so excited, especially yesterday, when I learned that there were about 80 major campuses and universities here in Kalamba. And imagine that. Imagine the impact. Imagine the plans and the purposes of God that will unfold just by you being here. And you're a part of that. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, you're a part of that. Kala mo ha, upu-upu, pero we are a part of that. And while going here, just like what Alana said, I didn't come here alone. I came here with my big, super handsome and most wonderful. So, sweetie, nakahaba ng hair mo. Sige, ano ka naman, mag, mag-guide ka naman sa kanila. In our, yeah, so I've been married for the past 19 years. We're blessed with um, miracle children. Five doctors told us we can't have a child. And you know, that's the first thing um, my parents told him when he actually proposed to me. Sigurado ka ba talaga napapangas- mapapangasawa mo yan? Kasi hindi ka niyan kayang bigyan ng anak. That's what they said. Baka ibalik mo yan sa akin, sabi nung mama ko sa kanya. Sabi niya, hindi naman po to no return, no exchange. Hindi naman po to ano. But you know, that is just to say, I said that because God bless us with two wonderful children. Samuel, just like what Alana said, is in Siliman now taking marine biology. And El is there actually doing his her assignments. Kasi tapos na po siyang umaten ng service. Pero may assignments po siya. But every time I look at them, I'm reminded that impossibilities are God's expertise. And that is actually what we're looking into. Every time when, as we go through this series, The Road Out. And before, before, ano no, bejo, bago, bago tayo tumawid doon, no? I just wanna say this, while going here yesterday with our daughter, I told her, you know, El, we've been here before. This is the birthplace of our national hero. Um, just a side story, I used to teach Jose Rizal in college and in, in, in La Salle and Saints Co. And, you know, I, we develop a, a curriculum for Jose Riz, uh, courses. So, sabi ko sa kanya, you know, this is the birthplace of our national. And thinking about that, I realized, grabe, no, this is such, this, this city has a really rich heritage. And you're a part of that. I believe that God would allow us to really rise up to the call that He has for us as a nation. It's no accident that God has placed here. But, of course, I want to honor my personal heroes in this city. You're pastors, Pastor Jared Sab, and your staff, Alana, si, si, sorry, si Joseph. Joseph ng pangalan niya dito. Kasi I've known Joseph since he was still a student. We call him on a different name. So he's Joseph. Now, in all your campus missionaries, you know, I want to just take this time to honor them. Thank you so much for really answering the call of God to shepherd his people and respond to his call to really, um, you know, just just serve him by serving his people. So just just take this time. Let's just honor them right now. So just like what I said, I really believe that impossibilities are God's expertise. And when we say the road out, you know, this was a time where in the Israelites were really looking into a situation where in, there's no way out. There's no road out. You know, when you look at this situation that they were in for the past years, it's as if this is the life that's been given to them. But, you know, when we look at the stories, I hope that you're encouraged for the past weeks. Sino sa inyo dito nandito for the past weeks? All throughout, you 
yon. Sabi ni Pastor Jared, matutupad daw ang wish nyo. But, but you know, we, that's what we've been learning all throughout. Diba? That, that when we think that there's no way out, God provides a way out for His people. And thinking about no way out, I remember reading one of the articles about the most inescapable prisons in the world. And it's found in Massachusetts. It's known as SBC, Sosa, Sosa Baranowski Correctional Center. And their motto is this, no way out. No way out. In, in fact, I have a picture there. Kasi um, ever since it was built, there were no prisoners who's able to escape this prison. Grabe, they have 600 prison guards for 1,500 people. 1,500 prisoners, they have cameras all over that are motion detectors. Talagang, basta may gumalaw, siguro kahit na daga, no? Talagang susundan nyo ng camera. Tapos, they're run by robots, the, the motion cameras. Not only that, yung motion sensors nila runs on solar and hydroelectric power. So that means, hindi talaga makakut off yung power. Pero not only that, yung, yung gilid niya, it's tool resistant. So there is no way out of this prison. And yeah, thinking about this, I realized maybe this is what the Israelites were feeling during that time. There is no way out of this situation. We've been here for the longest time. You know, I feel like there is nothing we can do about it. And maybe, maybe you're in that same situation right now. Maybe you're feeling, you look at your situation where you are and you're saying, Lord, parang this is the end of my rope. Lord, maybe this is, there's no way out of this. But I'm hoping that the past weeks have encouraged you that our God is faithful and true. And He will continue to provide a way out for His people. That's why I'd like to ask everyone to please stand as we read the Word of God for us this afternoon. Open your Bibles with me if you have your Bibles with you. And we'll read from Exodus 11, verses 1 to 6. And it says here, The Lord said to Moses, Yet one plague more I will bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will drive you away completely. Speak now in the hearing of the people that they ask every man of his neighbor, every woman of her neighbor for silver and gold jewelry. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. So Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight I will go out in the midst of Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the cattle. There shall be... A great cry throughout the land of Egypt, such as there has never been, nor ever will be again. Lord, we just want to thank you for your word. Father, we ask that even as we continue to look into who you are and the things that you have done and you will continually do in our lives, I pray that you'd open our hearts to receive from you today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may all take your seats. And around eight years ago, my husband... I had the opportunity to go to Egypt because they conducted a conference there for the young people. And, you know, they were, around, they were with a lot of Egyptian pastors during time. In fact, that's a picture. So, sabi niya, grabe yung kamay, hirap na hirap. Buhatin siya during that time. No? But there's one particular picture here. Actually, yung nasa likod nila is the Nile River. So, he, sabi niya sa akin, sweetie, I was imagining. This is the river that turned into blood. So, dahil parang nag-imagine na siya. And during that time, I remember our kids were still smaller and one of their favorite you know movies is the prince of egypt napanood nyo na ba yon okay di ba ang ganda ng adaptation pero ang daming biblical inaccuracies tsaka historical inaccuracies pero it's a good you know it's a good film to watch to get the feels of it so sabi niya na imagine niya daw this is the one that turned ano that turned into blood and all that is kasama niya yung mga ibang egyptian pastor so nakimarites siya sabi niya sabi niya inas niya daw yung one of the egyptian pastor sabi niya um of course, in English, no? pero Filipino tayo ngayon. Sabi niya, you know, um, reading through the plagues of Egypt in Exodus, as an Egyptian, how do you feel about it? So sabi doon, Egyptian pastor, what do you mean? Well, you know, when you look at the Exodus, and as an Egyptian, don't you feel like you're the villain in this story? Diba? Imagine, he's a Christian, he's a pastor, tapos yung asawa ko, diba, nakim- y- sina- pinoint out mo, pwede, joke lang, but, but you know, ang ganda nung sagot, nung pastor na yun, sabi niya, you know, actually, it depends on your perspective of the plague. 
Because, yeah, it's a judgment, but it's really different when you have a relationship with God. And you know, I realized when he told me about that when he went home, oo nga, no? That's what it happens when your perspective is so much different and your relationship is so much different. And if you look at it, in reality, all events that we have been looking into for the past weeks, for those who doesn't have a relationship with God, it's really an act of judgment. It's really an act of judgment against their gods, against all the things that they've done. But realizing this, you know, for those who have a relationship with God, you know what it means? It means deliverance. It means grace. It's an act of God's mercy. That's why it's a miracle. And that's what I've been saying all throughout this series in you. But, you know, I'm, I told them na, na, you know, this is actually a plague for those who doesn't have a relationship with God. But it's a miracle for those who have a relationship with God. That's why if you remember for the uh, yung first week nung series natin, di ba? we didn't start off looking into the miracles right away. But how did we start off this series? We started off this series by going back to how actually God introduced himself to Moses. Di ba? God introduced himself to Moses first and foremost, so that Moses can actually allow his people to see this is who our God is. You see, before God showed the people what he can do, he introduced who he is to each and every one of them. That's why it's interesting if you look back again at all the miracles that we have looked into for the past weeks. There's one phrase that keeps on resonating over and over again. Napansin nyo ba yon? Before the miracle, while the miracle is being done, or plague, whatever perspective you have, and after the miracle, it's this. There's one phrase that keeps on resonating over and over again, and it's this. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. You know why? Because that is God's desire. God's desire is for His people to know Him. You see, every plague or miracle is an opportunity to know God. Every plague or miracle is an opportunity to know God because that is God's desire for each and every one to actually know Him. But not only that, you know, especially yung last week, di ba? Ang ganda. Grabe, ang dami. Anim na miracles. Di ba talagang dinaanan natin? But every plague or miracle is not just an opportunity to know God, but it's an opportunity for the world to know who are God's people. You see, I hope that you're encouraged, you're excited, you're in faith every time you come out of this service. You're stirred up in faith and you get up, you, you know, you come out of that door getting excited for the miracles that God has in store for you. But I'm praying that the way we respond to this is not just for us personally. That the world would know that that we have a God whom we trust, a God who is faithful to His promises. That's why, you know, if you look back the past three years that we've been into, actually, there's that aspect that, alam mong talagang ibang-iba yung the way the Christians responded to to, to, the, to the challenges and trials. I know all of us are hit by the, by, by the pandemic and there's a lot of things that happened, but... What's our message all throughout this time? It's a message of hope, right? It's a message of wholeness. It's a message and declaration of peace and the great promises of God. Why? Because that is who our God is. And I'm praying that's also the same thing. Now, we won't just go out of this service and say, okay, I've known God more. Okay, I want to I wanna believe God for His miracles. But the way we respond would be, seen by people, that there's really a distinction. Diba? That's what we talked about last week. There's a distinction. Diba? Imagine nyo ba yun? Ang galing ni Lord, no? There's a distinction. Yung mga flies, paano sila nagkaroon ng radar na doon lang sila sa land of Egypt and hindi kasama yung land of Goshen? Diba? There's a distinction. Why? Because everything, parang the world would know that these are God's people. And I hope that we respond with that, not in self-righteousness, but we respond, Lord, help us, enable us, especially in a world that's really, you know, um, uh, na, 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 na lugmok sa despair. We feel that. We experience that. But God, I pray that we would know you in this situation and the world would know you through our response to this situation as well. So every plague, or miracle is an opportunity to know God. But not only that, you see, every plague 
or miracle is an opportunity to know God and experience His majesty. You see, knowing, that's the base level. You see, pag tinignan mo yung mga Egyptians during that time, alam nila kung sino si Lord. Pero maybe, they haven't trusted Him fully because all of that are kwentos, di ba? Kwento ng mga forefathers nila in all of these things. But the Lord has done all these miracles for them to experience His majesty. Sino sa inyo yung katabi niyo, feeling niyo mukhang generous, kagaya ng exhortation ni Alana kanina? Alam niyo, generous yan, mukhang generous. Pero paano niyo malalaman na generous talaga yan? Diba? Pag na-experience mo, nanilibre ka niyan after this, after this, ano, oh, yan na, nag, nag, nagsikohan na, ba? Diba? Kaya nga, diba tayo mga Pilipino, meron tayong term na, pa-experience mo naman, ba? Diba? Sino sa inyo dito mga mag-asawa? And, and happily married. Sweetie, magtaas ka ng kamay. Yan. <laughs> Yun. Si, di ba? I'm sure you can attest na people would say that your your spouse is loving, pero kayo na-experience niyo. Hopefully. Tama, di ba? Di ba? Ako talaga pag sinasabi nila, bait ng asawa ko. Mabait talaga, di ba? E, talagang, e, alam mo yung sobrang, yes, because I have experience. And that's also the same thing. Maybe the the people, the Israelites during that time, they know, ah, itong God na to, ito yung kinukwento sa atin ni, ni, ah, ni, ni, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But they haven't experienced this aspect of God. That's why He wants them to know Him, not just know Him, but to experience His majesty. Now, when you look about, when you think about majesty, there are actually three things that, um, uh, that really comes to mind instantly. Di ba pag majestic, you think about there's that certain degree of authority. Di ba kapag kayong mga majesty, meron tayong mga modern day majesties ngayon, yung mga kings, que- queens, di ba? There's a certain degree of authority that they exude. Not only that, they have that sense of dignity. Tama ba? Meron silang value, meron silang worth. But not only that, for you to become a majesty, you have to be on a certain line. So, meron kang sense of identity. And actually, if you look at it, di ba sabi ko na the, the, every plague and miracle is an opportunity to know God and experience His majesty. This is what He actually showcased in this last plague or miracle. You see, let's look at it one by one, di ba? The Israelites might have heard of his mighty acts, mighty works from his fa- from from the forefathers, but it was time for them to experience him. Maybe you're here today. You've been hearing about this God. You've been hearing about the great miracles that God has done. Maybe through your friend, through your victory group leader, or to the people in the church. But now, I believe that it is time for us to experience God's majesty. So, authority. Let's look at it, diba? Majesty is about authority, dignity, and identity. Now, authority over what? When you look at it, God in this final showdown, final battle, is actually allowing the people to see that He has authority over every God of Egypt. Alam natin to, all throughout, pag tinignan mo lahat ng plagues or miracles that God did, it's actually to discredit every God of Egypt. I actually have a chart there to, for us to go through it one by one. Tignan nyo na lang, picturean nyo na lang, and all that. Every plague or miracle may corresponding answer na God, yung Egypt during that time. But God actually dethroned and discredited each one of them, and He judged each and every one of them. You see, God is in the business of dethroning gods in our lives. God is in the business of dethroning all the gods that we hold on to for security, for assurance. Those are the gods of Egypt. That how, that's, that's what they represent. Yung assurance nila that they would have life is on this God. Yung assurance nila that they would have prosperity and abundance is on the All of them were discredited because of the plagues and miracles. And even today, I believe that God is exercising this degree of authority so that all the other gods will be dethroned in our lives. Not only that, you know that um, God allowed His people to experience His majesty by allowing them to see, wow, He has authority over other gods here on earth. But not only that, you see, He actually allowed His people to see 
this authority over every affair of humans. See, every affair of human. what do I mean by that? When you go back to our story, we read there in verse 5 that every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on this throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the cattle. What does this mean? You see, this is actually an act of judgment for what they have done when Pharaoh, remember the time when Moses escaped? When Pharaoh actually killed all the infants, all the male infants during the time. It's actually found in Exodus 1, verse 15 to 16. It says there, Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra and other Pua, When you serve as midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. You see, imagine this with me. You know, sometimes in our life, we feel like, Lord, I feel like this thing has been forgotten. There's so much injustice that has been done. There's so much, you know, parang when we look at the affairs of our society, affairs of our nation, parang there's so much injustice. Lord, Lord, when are you coming through for this? When are you answering our prayers for this? We've done all our part on this. You see, so how many of you have felt this at one point? Maybe not on the parang bigger aspect, pero you felt like there's so much injustice done to you. Lord, grabe, OT na nga ako ng OT. Pero ako pa rin ang delayed lagi ang promotion. That's so much injustice, right? You feel like you're giving so much and yet it's not compensated. Or Lord, grabe, kung studyante ka, tama ba, hindi ka na nga nangungopia, tapos ikaw pang magtitake ng special exam. Diba ang sakit? Lord, there's so much injustice. Imagine what the Israelites were feeling during that time. Imagine the injustice, the injustice that has been done to them all throughout. And they felt like maybe that's what, what they've been feeling. Lord, maybe you have forgotten. Baka nakalimutan mo ito yung ginawa nitong mga taong to sa But the Lord did not forget. You see, He would bring to judgment every work and every intention of man. And that, what does this do? What does this do? You know, if you have a relationship with God, this is very assuring. Why? Because you know that your situation right now doesn't depict the future destination of where God wants you to be. That's why we can continue to hope. That's why we can continue to declare. That's why we can continue to be faithful. Even if we don't see things as it is. Even if it pains you, we can continue to still hope for our nation. We can continue to still hope for change. We can continue to disciple people. Lord, sabi natin change na campus change. Why is it that we're not even feeling the change here? <laughs> but God, that is who you called us to be. Every work, every intention of man will be brought to righteous judgment. It's the righteous judgment of God that would, he would, ex, you, he would exhibit this authority by righteous judgment. You see, if you don't have a relationship with God, that is scary. That is scary. You would say, oh my, I would be just judged. But if we have a relationship with God, you know, it brings so much hope in us and it can allow us to continue on going because our hope is not anchored on how we see things around us, but our hope is anchored on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the righteous judge who will bring things into light. What a comfort, right? God exhibited all of this. He wants people to experience His majesty by allowing the Israelites then to experience, I have ultimate authority over these things, over all these gods that this nation have, and over every affair of human. And I believe that's also the same thing that is reminding each and every one of us today. He has authority over, and what a comforting thing. And you know what's more comforting about that? God is not just an egotistical, he's not an egotistical God that would say, okay, all authority belongs to you, and he's a loving God. See, all of these things is done out of love. That's why, that's why ang heart niya is to restore. That's why, di ba, when we talk about lordship, when we talk about be, him being king, sometimes it's feel, it feels restricting for some kasi you feel restricted, you feel like, oh no, you don't have rights. But actually, it's liberating if you know who is your lord and who is your king. If you know that this king is benevolent, if you know that this king is generous, who wouldn't want 
Who wouldn't want to be under that authority? You know, sometimes we feel like we're so restricted kasi feeling natin, Lord, konting magkamali lang, mahuhulog na ako. You know, sometimes, what I always say is, you know, we feel like this is the boundary that God has given us. And the Bible says, the boundary lines have fallen in pleasant places. The boundaries are supposed to be pleasant. The authority of God is supposed to be pleasant. But sometimes we feel restricted. We feel confined kasi we walk so close to it na wala nang tutulak sa'yo. Mahuhulog ka. Diba? But you have so much room here to enjoy the authority, the blessing, the favor of God. This is where God wants to walk us in. That's why when we recognize His authority, it's not restricting. It's actually liberating. Wow, Lord, ito pala yung authority mo. Now, I, pwede nga ako mag-cartoon dito, pero wag ngayon, di ba? Di ba? This is liberating. I don't know about you, but God's righteous judgment brings so much hope in me. But it also convicts me. Why? Because I also know, sige, mamaya na, I went ahead of myself. Naiyak na kasi ako, but yeah. So majesty, majesty. So another aspect of majesty is this. There's that sense of dignity, di ba? When you say dignity, you know, it refers to the quality worthy of being, of, of honor and respect. And to, for us to understand this, why it's important during the time, we have to understand their culture. You know, they're a warring culture. And, and they would say that they treat you based on who your God is. If they feel like your God is just so-so or medyo, alam mo yun, parang is, ano, inferior to, our, to their gods, grabe, talagang mamaalitin ka nila. And it gave us a glimpse of how they see the God of Israel during that time. Now, relating it to the Israelites, how did the Egyptians treat God's people? Verse Chapter 1, verse 9 to 11 tells us this. He said to his people, Pharaoh, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And if war breaks out, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set what taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh's store cities, Pitom and Ramesses. says, you know, there was so much oppression such that there was so much groaning for the Israelites during the time. So, ang nangyari doon, inopress nila. So, yung mga Israelites, it says there in Exodus 2 verse 24, and God heard their groaning and God remembered this covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Imagine this with me. The oppression is so strong, so painful that they cried out for help. And mind you, ha, you know, sometimes the, the English translation of the word does it give justice to the original word you know groaning here doesn't mean just cry na parang natapakan ka or yung ingron mo na alam mo parang hindi ganon the groaning here is a desperate cry for help for a savior that was what the Israelites were experiencing during that time they were feeling we're trapped we can't do anything Lord deliver us deliver us maybe they were looking into Egypt to deliver them. Maybe they were looking to Pharaoh already to deliver them out of their situation. Maybe they were looking to the taskmasters to deliver. But whatever it is, there was so much groaning in their souls and in their hearts that asked for deliverance to be taken out of the situation. Have you ever felt that? Have you ever been in a situation wherein, kahit na sino, just rescue me, take me out of this situation. I want to be out. Hindi ito yung tipong swallow me earth moment lang, no? Ito talaga yung talagang there's so much pain and yet you feel like you're paralyzed. There's so much pain and yet you feel like you can't do anything about That was what the Israelites were feeling during that time. And you know, I had to wrestle with this, with this verse. Kasi sabi dito, di ba? And God heard their groaning. Wasn't He hearing it all throughout? sabi dito, and he remembered this covenant. Nakalimutan niya ba yung covenant? But you know, if I look at it, it's not that God is the one who forgot the covenant. It was the people who forgot who their God is. So I remember going back to that. God is telling them, hey, trust me. That's why if you look at it, di ba, kahit na nung wala na nga sila sa Egypt, they would still go back to, sasabihin nila, di ba, pag nahihirapan sila, sana binalik mo na lang kami sa Egypt. You know, it was so easy actually for God to take them out of Egypt. But it took so much more for Egypt to be out of them. You see, they might not profess 
that they trust their gods, but they might have trusted other gods during the time that they didn't realize have oppressed them. The taskmasters whom they look up to, to give them food. Di ba yun yung sinasabi nila? Pagkatapos ito, paglabas nila sa, sa Egypt, yun parang at least doon, may pagkain kami, at least doon, comfortable kami, at least doon. Pero imagine, these taskmasters, they don't have their best intentions at heart. That is what God is saying. You see, all this oppression, it's because you subjected yourself to these things that you feel like can sustain you and can hold you. That is not my heart for you. You see, all this oppression, imagine this with me. The people of God were groaning so loud, so loud to God. God reminded them, I am faithful. I'm to, would you be willing to cry out to me? You see, if you're in that situation right now, maybe it's time to evaluate. Who are you crying out to? Maybe God is reminding you, cry out to me. I hear your voice. I hear where you, I know where you are and I'm able to rescue you. See, God's final plague will actually result, if you look at this, God displayed his dignity by showcasing it in the final plague. What did happen in the final plague? Diba? There was death among the firstborn. And the death of the firstborn in the land of Egypt resulted in a loud cry from the oppressors. See, in Exodus 11, verse 6, Sabidon, there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has never been, nor ever will be again. God showcases dignity by redeeming his people from oppression. That is how God did it. You see, if you feel like you're oppressed at this time, God can redeem you from that situation. God can redeem you from that situation. And you know, again, for those who doesn't trust God, this is a scary thing. But for those whose hope and, and faith is in God, it makes you secure. Yes, it might be challenging. Yes, it might be, you know, it might be tight at this time. Yes, it might be feeling mo talagang you can't do anything. About, but you know that that's not the end of your story. You see, God wants his people to, to know him and to experience his majesty. And he showcases it by allowing his people to know and experience his identity, to know and have a, an experience of the dignity that he has as God and how he's actually restoring it back to his people. But not only that, God showcases it by revealing to people his identity. See, God revealed who he is, not just to the, to the people of Israel, but to the entire humanity. When these plagues or miracles happened, it did, it's not just for the Egyptians, it's for all, diba, to see. The Israelites were watching, the Egyptians were there. You see, my husband would term it as the battle, ano yan? Boss battle. Diba, the boss battle. Sino sinyo yung mga nag-online nag game? Wala, kasi, okay, yung panahon na lang ni Pastor Jared, di ba? Pastor Jared, di ba si, uh, si Mario Brothers, naalala nyo ba yon Kasi si Mario Brothers pa ulit-ulit lang, di ba, si King Koopa, pero, pero lumalaki at, at nag-harden yung shell niya. Ito na yung boss battle season, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, imagine this, imagine this with me. Egypt is a superpower because, again, going back to their culture right now, th at that time, you're a superpower if you have the best God. But even their best God was defeated. Why? Because if you look at it, they believe that Pharaoh is an incarnate God. Pharaoh is God in human form. But Pharaoh was powerless to actually save his son during that time. But not only that, God put an end to that. Because if Pharaoh is an incarnate God and the firstborn, firstborn died, then there's no more gods that would follow. In that lineage. You see, God revealed his identity by ultimately proving that he is the only one true God over all the nations. Ah, ang naalala ko dito is, you know, it's, the battle has already been won even before it began. You know, I remember there was a, a season in the Olympics where in um, Wyndham House, well, you can research that, actually won uh, by a victory, uh, by a walkover victory. We know it now as victory by default. But what happened was, during the sprint, uh, he, um, he's into the 400-meter sprint. Ang nangyari nun is, um, yung mga ibang contestants, they protested, so they didn't show up. Okay, so even before, actually, it was a victory for Windham, Windham Halswell. Windham, Windham Halswell. Sorry, yung, yung, ano niya, yung name niya. Because, Wala na eh, wala siya kalaban. And that's also the same thing, you know, I believe when God actually revealed all His glory, all these things, 
Wala naman siyang kailangan patunayan. Why? Because he's the winner over all. But you know what with Wyndham House will have to do? He would have to show up in that field and still walk over to claim the medal. That's also the same thing. You see, God already showed us, proved to us that He is the boss. Alam mo yun, actually, wala nga itong mga to, mga fake bosses to eh. Di ba? Pero yung thought na He already reigns and rules, this is His identity. He is the creator. He is the Lord. He is the King. And yet, I believe that God is actually allowing us, allowing us, di ba? As Christians, it gives us so much assurance if we know that. But God would also allow us to walk there, to show up in the race that God has called us in, and to walk over so that we can claim the prize. That's the same thing. You see, imagine this with me. God revealed His identity to His people then. But God revealed that to the people, to the people, um, the nations then, by restoring the identity of the nation. And He did not just restore the identity of the nation as Israel, but you know what He called them? He called them His people. His people. Now your identity is not based on your nationality. Your identity is not based on your economic status. Your identity is based on who your God is. Your identity is based on me. You see, imagine this with me. God showcased that through, to the world. God wants every person to have an opportunity through this plague or miracle to know Him experience His majesty, but not only that, you know, continuing on, you have to realize that, yes, God allowed all these things to happen so that people would have the opportunity to know Him, to experience Him, but not only that, so that we can also live according to His grace and mercy. See, what does grace mean? Diba ang ganda nung, nung ano, exhortation kanina about, about um, offering, giving in generosity. Because it's the grace. You know, when you say grace, it speaks of favor and earthly blessings. And we want that. Who wouldn't want that? Who wants, to, who wants to receive the grace of God? You know, what's the other aspect of grace? Grace is getting what we don't deserve. See, we don't deserve all of these things. But God chose to give it anyway. You see, when you look at it, the Israelites doesn't even deserve to be delivered. Why? They forgot God already. But God gave it anyway. Why? Because of His grace. But another aspect of that is realizing that there is mercy. You know what mercy is? Mercy is not getting what we deserve. What you deserve. What do they deserve? They deserve, I mean, if you look at it, it's not just the Egyptians who deserve judgment, but it's also the Israelites. But because of God's mercy, God allowed them to be delivered. And you know what? This mercy has been extended, not just to the Israelites, but to the Egyptians as well. First and foremost to Pharaoh. Imagine this with me. Ten opportunities to repent. Ten opportunities to actually respond to God. And yet, the heart was hard. You see, when I look at it, God, talagang this is something that I have to wrestle. You know, I realize that if I'm the recipient of the righteous judgment of God and I'm on the end of the one who's been done injustice or who's been oppressed, I would love that. I would love to receive the grace and the mercy of God. But it took me a while to actually receive this, that this grace and mercy is also available for the oppressors. That is hard. Lord, talaga? Itong mga ito, makikita ko sa heaven pag nag-respond sila sa'yo. Sino sa inyo may ganong battle sa puso niyo? Wala. Ako lang. Masama yung ano ko. Kaya nga, kailangan ako i-transform ni Lord, ba? So yung thought na yun na, Lord, but I would have to believe that when I say grace and mercy, it's unlimited. Wala siyang pinipili. And that's the same thing that the Lord is exhibiting to His people. That's why... That's why when God allowed Pharaoh, di ba, parang he, he is allowing Pharaoh to have the opportunity to respond time and time again. That's also the same. You know what this made me realize? There's no person that's too hard for God. Every person can turn their hearts to God. Every person would be given an opportunity to receive God's grace and mercy. But the question is, will we be willing to respond? You see, I realized this. And it really, you know, I really had to resonate with this. Now, Lord, even in your judgment, you're merciful. 
even in your judgment, you're merciful. That's why, that's why it gives us so much hope. But sometimes we have to wrestle with our flesh as well. Na grabe, yung mga oppressors na kinamumuhian natin, na yung mga people who did injustice, probably pag nasheran sila ng gospel, magre-respond sila, makikita ko sila sa heaven. Di ba? Pero I would have to receive that that is the truth. From this, you see, when we're on the receiving end of grace favor, we love that. But we have to also recognize that all of us are here because of the mercy of God. And that is what God exhibited. That is what God displayed here during the Passover. He says there, For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You shall observe this right as a statute for you and for your sons forever. And when you come to the land that the Lord will give you as he has promised, you shall keep this service. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For the pa for he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians but spared our houses. And the people bowed their heads and worship. You see, this act is a foreshadowing of the ultimate grace and mercy that we receive through Jesus Christ's death on the cross. What did God instruct the Egyptian, uh, the, the Israelites do during that time? Diba? They had to kill a lamb and put the, the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. Doesn't that sound familiar? You see, they would have to respond in faith that this will work. That this is the command of God. That just because of that blood, I can be saved. My family will be saved. You see, Jesus is the ultimate Passover love for each and every one of us. And His blood, you see, His blood, it was not spilled. There's nothing tempor uh, There's nothing incidental about it. Hindi yun, ay, di ba pag naspill, you, there's uh, walang intentionality about it. Parang you don't want it, but it was shed. For each and every one of us. That is the ultimate Passover for each and every one of us. My question is, will we be willing to put our full trust in the blood of Christ that has rescued us fully and completely? Just like what God did to the Israelites then. Just because of that lamb, they will be spared. You know, it's so scary. The Bible didn't say, but it's so scary for me to even think that there were Israelites who didn't even follow this. Diba? And I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't, you know, went in depth onto this. But when you look at it and how they cross to the Red Sea, there were a lot of other foreigners, mixed multitudes, the Bible will say, that went with them, that was spared. You see, it is not the nationality it is not the culture, but it is the blood of the Lamb that rescued them. And they have to put their full weight, full trust on that. You know, I realize, maybe for some of us, we become so familiar with the blood. Maybe we become so familiar with the weight of that sacrifice that we fail to even, yes, we know God, but we fail to experience His majesty. And because of that, when we look at our lives, we don't live according to His grace and mercy. You know, going back to the SBC Correctional Center, remember the Sosa Baranowski Correctional Center in Massachusetts. Yes, they say that there's no way out of this prison. Yes, they say that wala, di ka talaga, once you're in, you can't go out. But thinking about this, I realize there is a way out. There is a way out of this prison. And you know what's the way out? It's pardon. When you're being pardoned for your sins. And actually, when you look at that, that is what God was offering His people. You see, they were equally rebellious. They equally resorted to other gods. But God pardoned them by the blood of the Lamb. God restored their dignity by allowing them to be reminded, this is your value. And God restored their identity. Di ba pag pinardon ka, pag lumabas ka ng, ng correctional, di ba somehow your honor, your value is restored as a human being. 
you're not an ill to the society. But not only that, what were you given? Paglabas mo dyan, di ba? You're given back your belongings. You're given back your identity to be immersed back into the community. And you see, I believe that yes, we see all these plagues and miracles happen, but I believe that that is what God is reminding each and every one of us today. That because of the blood of Christ, that's why super nag-resonate sa akin yung song that we're singing a while ago. That it's only by the blood of Jesus, our righteousness, us becoming white as snow, us living by His grace, enjoying the earthly favors, and allowing us to receive His mercy. It's only by the blood of Christ. The question is, are we still willing to respond to that revelation? Are we still willing to respond in worship towards God? Not just through our mouths, but through our lives. You see, the reason why God wants to free His people is because so that they can worship Him. They can live freely in Him. And that is what we're going to do today. You see, every plague, every miracle is an opportunity to know God, to experience His majesty, and to live according to His grace and mercy. And that is the opportunity that God is giving us today as well. I'd like to ask everyone to please stand as we respond to the Word of God. And I'd like to pray for a few group of people. Like, maybe for some of you, you feel like there's so much injustice that has been done. And the Lord is assuring you right now. The Lord is saying, I see those things. And it caused you so much pain. It caused so much wound in your heart and in your soul. And it it actually place you in a situation where in Lord, when is my deliverance coming? Guess what? It's here and it's now. If you're that person and you feel like you're experiencing that, God wants you to be delivered from that situation. Just raise up your hands. It's between you and God. This is family. You feel like there's so much injustice. With the Lord, you see these hands that are raised. Lord, you know the atrocities and the wrongs that have been done towards them, God. Maybe intentionally, unintentionally, or a consequence of other people's actions. God, I ask, would you remind them today that you're a righteous God? Lord, I ask, would you allow them, God, to continue to respond in faithfulness despite of the situation? And God, I ask, would you allow the pain to be healed right now? Receive your healing right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, thank you that we can look up to you because you are our righteous God. And we look up to you as the source of our hope and our vindication. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, another group of people that I want to pray is this. Maybe you're not, you know, you're not into that. Now you feel like there's no injustice that's been done. But there's so much oppression. You feel like you can't get out of it. And there's so much, you know, I don't know, like you feel paralyzed, you can't do anything about it. That's the reality. You can't do anything about it, but God can. God can. And He wants to deliver you from it right now. If you're that person, you feel like there's a lot of things that's oppressing you. Maybe it's a cause of your action. Maybe it's, you know, it's, yun lang, parang wala ka nang magawa. But God wants you to be released from that situation right now. If you're that person, just raise up your hands and say, Lord, that's me. That is me. Lord, you see these hands that are raised. Lord, right now, I pray that you deliver them from these things that's causing them from causing them to be oppressed, God. Causing them to be to feel restricted. Lord, I ask, would you allow them, God, to experience your deliverance today and allow faith to rise up within their souls right now, knowing that they can continue to respond in faithfulness, God. Lord, thank you that you're allowing them to experience freedom from this in the mighty name of Jesus. Freedom from these things that oppresses them. Freedom from the things that would cause them to feel restricted, God. And allow them to experience the liberty that they have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now for all of us, I want us to do this. God is reminding us of how powerful the blood of the Lamb is. And as we sing this song, as the music team is going up to lead us into worship, I'm praying that this would resonate in our hearts and in our soul. 
that we would be reminded, Lord, this is what the blood of the Lamb, this is what the blood of Jesus did for each and every one of us, that we can walk in righteousness, that we can actually respond with so much grace, that we can actually respond with so much reverence because of your mercy and your grace. Lord, I pray that you'd break any familiarity in our souls right now. Maybe for some of us who've been walking with you for so long, this has been familiar, God, and we become accustomed to it. Lord, I ask, would you allow us to be stirred up once again, to be reminded of what this blood did to each and every one of us that has redeemed us, that has rescued us, and that's allowed us to be called as sons and daughters. So Lord, even as we worship you today with our mouths, empower us, God, to worship you with our lives as well. That our lives would be a living testimony of your mercy and grace. Let's just sing this song in response to the word of God today. Sing this. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. been calling you. Pero ito na yung time na kailangan ko nang sumagot. I was reminded of um, yung dun sa message, identity. God restores our identity. You belong to the Lord in the first place. And He, re he re redeemed us. He, brought, he bought us back with His blood. You belong to Him in the first place. You're not a slave of sin no longer a slave of that bondage. And He wants you to, I want to give you this opportunity 
to receive Him as your Lord and Savior. Because you are His son and you are His daughter. Hindi yun yung identity mo. You are His. You are His. Sabi nga niya, di ba? My people. You are His son and you are His daughter. So I would like to lead you in a prayer of acceptance. Kung feeling mo, Lord, I will say yes. Natawag mo na ako matagal na. Would you raise your hand? Let me pray for you. Lead you into sa decision to receive Him as your Lord and your Savior. To accept your identity. Nire-restore sa'yo ni Lord that you are His son and you are His daughter. Can you raise your hand? We want to pray for you. Lord, thank you that they have heard your cry in their hearts. They are your sons and your daughters and you are restoring their identity, their dignity, Lord God. Can you pray this with me? Lord, I am so sorry for my sins. Maraming salamat na pinapaintindi mo sa akin through your word na ikaw ang aking Diyos. Ikaw yung you shed your blood for me to save me. And Lord, I am responding by asking for forgiveness, repenting of my sin, turning away from this so that I can follow you. I can follow your voice calling me back to you. I can go into your embrace and be reminded, be restored in that identity that I am your son. I am your daughter. Lord, thank you for these hands that are raised. We pray, Lord God, that as the days and the weeks would come, mas maintindihan pa po nila yung revelation ng identity nila, kung ano po yung ginamama para sa kanila. We thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we dismiss, okay lang ba kung mag-open tayo ng lights? Mas madali lang makita. <laughs> So, um, naglinger lang sa akin yung illustration kanina ni Pastor Mai ng difference ng walking here tsaka difference ng binigyan tayo ng malaking-malaking space ni God. Really. Na, uh, I feel like it's an invitation. Huwag ka dyan. Dito ka. Walk with the Lord. Walk with the Lord Jesus. So that we will experience that victory that He has purchased for us. Pero we we experience it following Him eh, not on our terms. Follow Him. Yun, so, let's continue to trust God. Trust Him. Trust His ways. Kung ano man po yung nilalagay niya sa heart mo, take action. Kasi, alam po niya kung ano sinasabi niya sa'yo. Alam niya kung paano ka niya ilili. Pero, please trust Him. Yun. Lord God, we receive every word, ministry, we had today. Thank you for the encounter. Thank you for the reminder of your love that you want each and every one of us to experience that freedom that can only be experienced with Christ. Thank you, Lord. We accept all of this, Lord God, and I pray as well that it will not just stay with us as we know you more, that we will also share this message to others na sila rin po ay may experience nila. Ikaw, bilang Diyos, nagapagligtas, Redeemer. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Victory Church, Kalamba, we are sent. Let's continue to honor God and make disciples. See you again sa last part ng series natin next Sunday.